African populations are rarely included in large genome studies of disease associations. But a group of geneticists are determined to counter this lack of inclusion. When I look at the human structure and you have the skin that covers you, and under that skin you have a world, for me that's how I see DNA. GeneMap is a, is a label name that we have given to our research center that means genetic medicine of African population. Our aim, first of all, is to focus on genetics of African continent, to focus on training on more geneticists, to focus on more people that does research in genetics. For the moment, we focus on three diseases, but it doesn't mean that it's the only thing that we do. One is sickle cell disease, and sickle cell disease being the most common genetic condition, monogenic condition of humankind. Sickle cell anemia is um, it's to do with red blood cells. They are shaped in a banana shape, whereby a normal human being, it's um, shaped in a circular um, shape, if I may put it that way. So ours is shaped into a banana shape, which gives it a bit of problems to us who have sickle cell, because when the oxygen flows in the blood, it sort of blocks the the, the the V-shaped cells, which can give you a lot of pain and discomfort. Both parents need to be carriers. My mom was a carrier and my father had the sickle cell disease on them. So basically when, they, when I was born, I was born with sickle cell anemia because the two of them had it. What we want to do in that disease is to look for factor that makes some of the children be less sick and other factor the children will be more sick in such a way that we can have maybe some other ways for, for, for treatment for that very specific condition that doesn't have a treatment for now. To this day there is still some doctors out there that are not familiar with sickle cell anemia. They're not aware of what it is so basically the research would be nicer if we could get more doctors on board to know what is sickle cell. So should you be in a, end up in an emergency they would know, OK, this is a sickle cell patient and what to treat you with. The second uh, uh, project we are working is called Hygiene Africa for Hearing Impairment uh, Genetic Research in Africa. In that specific project, our, our, our real task is gene hunting. We are looking for novel genes that affect children that are born with hearing impairment in Africa. We try to get families where there are many ch children that are affected by hearing loss use their blood to look for new genes. Once we get it, we put it back into the freezer to keep it frozen until we start extraction. So that's usually the same week as when we get the blood. And what you do is you take it out the freezer and you actually let it thaw out. So you let it melt. Once we've done that, then we start the extraction process, which is basically we use the robot which does the entire extraction for you within two hours. After extraction, you get your DNA. We measure the DNA, we get the concentration, we standardize it. After the PCR, I take them through sequencing. And the sequencing is trying to look at the arrangements of the nucleotides that make up the DNA. So we are looking for mistakes or variations in the arrangement of the DNA. And these mistakes or variations can lead to the condition that's deafness or hearing impairment. We want to understand, let's say, most how genomic variation in African population can impact family, and how do we communicate those genetic conditions or those genetic mutations within family? What would be the impact in the in in family in general that is called if genera for incidental funding in genomic research in Africa? If genera is saying, well, could, could it be meaningful to return, to give back individual genetic research results? And if so, which results and how do we give those back? The purpose here is to really bridge the gap between um, African population's understanding of hereditary diseases and them really seeking a medical service and sourcing um, expertise that will help bridge that gap.
Generally, when people fund research in Africa up to now, it's been shown that very, very few research was funded for disease that really relevant to Africa. So the idea was first of all to address those and all those levels by kind of involving the Faculty of Health Science here, changing a little bit the curriculum, improving the curriculum, increase the number of graduates that are African in terms of genetics. So that really the big philosophy behind GeneMap. I believe like life began in Africa. It was just one big continent. You can climb a mountain, go down the rivers and everything like that. Life, Africa, is the heart of it all.